Hey guys, welcome summer campers. Uh, let's go ahead and start by taking roll. Yep, good job, good job, we're all here. Um, I've loved so much getting to watch your chants that you guys have been putting up. And here in just a minute, we're gonna announce the winner. Uh, we've got a guest judge coming on to announce that winner. Before we get started, I wanna, start, wanna go ahead and do our camp devotional for the day. And one of the things that I was thinking about, I woke up thinking about this this morning, about dreams. Did you ever have a big dream, something you were planning or hoping for when you were a kid? Like, I want to be a firefighter when I grow up, or uh, I want to be an astronaut when I grow up. I want to be a doctor when I grow up. You know, inevitably, if you had a dream and you told your parents, if you're still a kid, maybe you've recently told your parents, or if you're a parent listening to this, you can remember your dream. Uh, whenever you told your parents, when I grow up, I'm going to be a fill in the blank. Inevitably, they followed with something like, that sounds great. If you want to do that, you've got to start planning for that, or you've got to start working for that. Or probably they said something annoying like, well, that sounds great. If you want to do that, you better first do your homework. I can remember being so annoyed by those kind of responses when I would share a big dream that I had. Uh, recently, my kids found online this uh, the seven unsolved math problems, the most famous math problems that have yet to be solved or something of that nature. And if you are able to solve them, there's like a million dollars at stake. They'll give you a million dollars if you can solve these unsolvable math problems. And so my kids heard about this and they began to talk about it and get paper out and discuss it. And, you know, being the old curmudgeon that I am sometimes, as parents sometimes are, I, I immediately squashed their dream and said, listen, some of the best minds in the world are working on these problems. Uh, you haven't even started algebra. You know, they've done calculus and all these other advanced math classes. So I began to encourage them. If you want to learn how to do those problems, then first you need to uh, do your pre-algebra homework now. Right? That sounds like something lame a parent would say. But uh, we understand that we must learn basic skills in order to advance to greater skills. And that's just how, how life goes. You, you don't start out being a black belt in karate. Uh, I've never taken karate, but I don't assume you start out being a black belt. You got to grow in, and learn in those skills to become great at it, uh, no matter what it is. And so the principle that I want to share with you right now is if you want to do great things, you must practice small things. If you want to do great things, you must practice small things. And this is a principle that's from the Bible in Luke chapter 16 and verse 10. Uh, and this comes after uh, a very interesting parable uh, about a shrewd manager. But we're not going to go into the details of that parable. But in verse 10, he says, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? And so the concept here is, uh, if I give you a little thing to do and you can't do the little thing, how can I possibly trust you to do a big thing, right? And that makes a lot of sense. You know, in our house, our kids do chores. You probably do chores at your house. If you're a parent, you do chores every day. No one asks you to, right? But our kids do chores. I have a four-year-old, and when she does chores, they look a lot different than the almost 14-year-old. They are different places in life. They're different uh, heights and strength levels and abilities. And for the four-year-old, I may ask her to pick up this thing and take it to your room or uh, carry this thing and give it to your mother or whatever the case may be. Uh, as children get older, you know, as you've gotten older, your parents give you bigger chores, bigger responsibility. You see, if I want to be somebody who is responsible, somebody who is uh, trusted with a lot of things, then I've got to learn to do the little things on my own. If you want to do great things, then you have to practice small things. I I like at the end of all these movies, you know, whether it be Avengers or whatever the great new movie is out, when there's always some sort of adversary, some great bad guy, at the end of all those movies, the the hero 
inevitably steps up at the very end and somehow, you know, jumps into this awesome karate move and fights the uh, the adversary, fights the great foe, the final boss, if you will. And that's amazing to watch in movies, and it always makes us happy to see them, uh, you know, whip the, the final boss. But the truth is, if that girl never learned karate, she's not going to know how to do karate when it comes time to do karate. Uh, and more importantly, if she had never practiced standing up for what's right in the small things, in the everyday things, then when it came time for that great beast to, to come and fight and they had to stand up against that, she would be in such fear she wouldn't know how to do that. You see, you can't stand up and fight the great big beast until you first learn to, to fight the little beast every day. And so what does that look like? Uh, it looks a lot like integrity. And if you don't know what that word is, talk to your parents about it. It looks a lot like doing what you're supposed to do when nobody's watching. It looks a lot like perhaps you're at home doing school, you're not used to doing that, and you don't want to do it. You didn't want to go to school normally, but now you got to get up and maybe you're trying to talk your parents out of doing school or doing your chores and you just want to sleep late and pretend that it's summer. But if you're not faithful in the little things, you'll never be faithful in the big things. So what I want you to do is I want you to talk to your parents. I want you to talk to people in your household. Find out, did they have a dream when they were young? Uh, what did they do or not do in order to achieve that dream? And uh, ask yourself, am I doing what I can to be faithful in the little things. Also, uh, think about what you want to be when you get big. What are the great things that you want to accomplish? Um, you know, every day you have the opportunity to be great. Someday. You may not do a great big thing today, but you can be great someday. You know, in this coronavirus stuff, it's been very interest to me, interesting to me. I've seen the little diagram with the matchsticks where... You may have seen this online where it, it lights and lights and lights. It's a progression of lighting match heads until one match head is moved out. And the, that's the idea of why we're all staying home and quarantining as it will so that we can keep other people safe. We're doing our one little part to make a great big uh, impact around the world. And so if you want to do great things, practice the small things. Hello campers, it's good to see you. I'm Professor Albeit Camp. You may remember me from camp last summer. Uh, I have been watching your videos that you are submitting with your chants. They are fantastic. I love them very, very much. They're very good. Some of them a little long and a little more over 30 seconds, but that's okay. We still love them because they're very wonderful. Very wonderful. Okay, so today your challenge, if you choose to accept it, is to make a video that illustrates uh, a chain reaction. Maybe you know what chain reaction means. It means when one thing makes something else happen, makes something else happen, makes something else happen. So maybe you could envision like some dominoes falling over, knocking each other over all the way down the line or something like that. So maybe go outside for a little while, leave your mom alone for a bit and come up with something that you could illustrate this chain reaction. I want to show you something that maybe shows a little bit of chain reaction. Some of you have saw this this summer. It's a roll of paper, and if I start it off, we'll see how this goes. It doesn't always go exactly as planned. We will try this. Okay, we will try this. Oh, look at this. Look at this chain reaction. Oh, that is pretty fascinating and very satisfying. I don't know about you, but this satisfies me very much. Keep going. Keep. Science is incredible, is it not? Okay, submit your videos. You will not be able to beat me, but we will see you later. Hey, welcome back to Virtual Camp Coddle. It is time for Silly Songs with Mr. Brent. So stand up, everybody. Stand up. Good job. Are y'all ready? Yes. Okay, here we go. The fruit of the Spirit's not a watermelon. The fruit of the Spirit's not a watermelon. If you want to be a watermelon. You might as well hear it, you can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruits are not your peace, but it's time to spill the table, then I'll miss it up and go. Hey, love your peace, but it's time to spill the table, then I'll miss it up and go. The fruit of the spirit's not a rage. The fruit of the spirit's not a rage. 
If you want to be a brain, you might as well hear it. Drink beer for the last beer, because it's beer time. The fruit of the spirit's not a passion fruit. If you want to be a passion fruit, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit because the fruit's not a something that'd be cool. Have somebody record you singing along with the silly songs and then we can all share together. Hey guys, this is Miss Tammy. Mr. Lee asked me to be the judge of our Camp Cottle Chants. I was the director at Camp Cottle for 15 years so I saw my uh, a lot of chants to say the least and so I'm gonna give you my top five. They were all very impressive. Thank you guys for sending them in. But number five goes to the Davises. Uh, Claire, Tyler, and Sam. The nice chant, but uh, it was a repeater chant. All right, number four goes to Mia and Katie. Like the chant, loved those piano skills. Number three was a tie, and they were brothers and sisters. I give those to Josh and Lily. Josh for your great dance moves, and Lily for your cuteness and your enthusiasm. You guys tied for third place. And number two, Miss Michelle would have given this the number one award back in the day because she was always a sucker for cuteness. And I have to say, those Clem twins were cute, but I give you the number two award. And number one, give a drum roll, goes to the Ruples. Jack and Gracie, very impressive. Loved your enthusiasm. Loved the expressions on your fit face. You were good and loud so that we could hear you. So that is my winner, the Ruples. Go Camp Coddle.